Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Sometimes we don't realize when God is trying to warn us. He's not fussing at us. I want to share a story that happened to me when I was young. My father and I used to sit on that couch and talk for hours. And my father was a man of the world, so he knew a lot of those little games people play on little green suckers. <laughs> little naive green suckers, yeah. And uh, he was telling me, he always warned me. He said, now, uh, I, I know you like to hang around these clubs and you think these people are your friends because they smile at you. You've always been that way since you were a little kid. You think somebody smiles at you, that automatically makes them nice. Well, it does not. And he said, and I know you're naive, but I don't want you to be hurt by it. Because what happens is there are people out there that will play games on you, that will line you up and set you up to be hurt. And you don't know it. And they're buttering you up and they're, they're, they're schmoozing you and they're, they're, they're kissing up to you and making you feel like, oh boy, you're the life of the party and we're so glad you came. He warned me. Two things I'm going to share that he warned. One, if, now this is my father talking now, so for those of you who don't have fathers, benefit from my father's wise instructions please if you are hanging out with some of your buddies from the club and they get a little drunk and they invite you to go ride with them and you're by yourself with them don't go I don't care how much fun you may think you may have don't go Nine times out of ten, he says, alcohol changes people. And people loaded with those spirits will do things to people that if they were sober, they would never dream of in a million years. they never dream of doing such things. But here they're under the influence. So this is what you do. <laughs> you make sure that you let them know that's okay, you're not in the mood. And you get away from them and get where there's safety. He said, this is what they will do. They've been known to do it for years, same old game. They tell you, let's go for a joy ride, but you're gonna be the central figure in this event. You're gonna be the main event, let's say. And these guys will get together and ride you up into the mountains somewhere out in the country in the woods. Wherever you don't know anything about. A very secluded location where nobody could hear you holler if you screamed with a blow horn. He said, and then they will nine times out of ten take advantage of you, rape you, beat you, and more than likely leave you for dead. Now, you know that happened to Dum Diddy Dum Dum one day? I'm sharing this with you to let you see. This wasn't far after that conversation when this happened. The good thing about what I went through was I saw it. I saw it in enough time to get out. See, sometimes we see, but we ignore. Oh, this ain't really happening. No, they're nice. Believe it if you want. Three insurance guys used to frequent that club. I would shoot pool, and they were sitting around reading the paper, talking about business. And one night, they were talking about going for a ride. Uh, they were going to go pick up something, and they were going to hang out for a while. They wanted to know if I wanted to ride with them. You know, I didn't even think about my father's talk. Didn't even think about it. You know, in one ear, out the other. Mm -hmm. And they started heading up the mountains. And I'm like, where are you guys going? And as 
God would have it. One of the big mouths spilled the beans. Ah, we gonna have a party up here in the mountains, girl. You and her, and we are gonna pate. And I said, whose house are we going to? Oh, we don't need no house for the party we're gonna have. So now, knowing that men are so given to the physical senses, I had to come up with a quick, I knew what was getting ready to happen now. They were drunk. I'd never seen them like that. Um, I had to come up with something really gross to get them to let, to let me back down that hill. Mm-hmm. First thing I said was, oh, that sounds like fun. I played it all. And they're just cracking up because they think I'm dumb. But I had a father who was not. And I was sitting there, and I said, "Uh uh-oh. And they said, what's the matter? I said, oh, I think y'all better get me down to a gas station. Why, what's wrong? I think I got a case of diarrhea. I don't know, what did I eat? I ate something. Oh, I ate it to so-and-so. Oh, Lord, you better hurry up and turn around. Don't you make no mess in my car, girl. Why don't you use the bushes? I said, "Uh uh-uh, this is going to be too messy for a bush. I got to get to a bathroom. I said, oh, God. Oh, no. They said, did you do something? I said, no, but I'm getting nauseous. I played played that off. You know, you mentioned (laughs) bowel movement and vomit. to a gas station we ended up at a hotel i knew the hotel it was close to where i live so i said well i can walk home from here (laughs) so i said oh let me go in this hotel they'll let me use the bathroom because i'm not gonna make it to the gas station so they said okay we'll wait in the car i got up to the window and i told the uh i told the clerk what the deal was, what they were up to, what they said, and how I was trying to get away from them and get out of dangerous way. Well, he decided to be kind. He said, you know, uh, a lot of prostitutes use this um, hotel. So he said a John and a, and a trick, you know, they just left, the, you know, a John and a prostitute just left room, whatever the number was. He said, now, if you're not queasy and, and you're not too picky, he said, at least you can stay there. You can stay there for the rest of the night. They paid for the night, but they're gone. So, and they turned in the key. He said, so you can stay there and just go on and spend the night. Just just move the sheets off the bed and you lay a, to- a couple of towels on there. And uh, he said, and then what you could do is just get up and slip out in the morning. All right. And I said, great. He said, but you got to lock up the door real good so they don't try to get in. That was so kind of him, but I got out of it. They sat there about 10 minutes and just said, oh, forget it, let's go. And I went on to sleep, and in the morning, I left and walked home. (laughs) Okay, scenery number two. This is not so funny. My father told me this. That's why we need to listen to instruction. You know, everybody, they they get to smelling themselves and they think, I'm grown, and you barely know how to write your name backwards. And you think you're a person of the world, a man of the world, a woman of the world. I know grown men who have been gang raped, so don't even try it. Okay, listen. I walked... I mean, I hitchhiked with a friend of mine. It was her idea. I wasn't excited about it. But I figured, well, I'm with her, so I'll be okay. Right. And this friend of mine hooks up with a guy and leaves me. 
I'm out here in L.A. I don't know where the heck I am. I, I'm, I, I'm totally out of my turf. So after a few zigzags and a few rendezvous, I make it to a hotel because I'm just bumming rides here and there. I make it to, not a hotel, I make it to a nightclub. And this guy, he, uh, he manages the nightclub and he takes, you know, he shows me that he's interested in me and blah, 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 blah. So he said, you know, he said, there's some guys that hang out, uh, around here that, that live in Altadena. Cause I was telling him I needed a ride. And he said, uh, so what we can do, I'm going to have a party at my house an after hours party. <clears throat> and um and you can ride with me and then I'll I'll hook you up with a ride to get home with one of the guys going back that way. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking this is really nice of this guy. I'm totally forgetting the warning of my father. If a man that you don't know says he's having an after party after the club closes and you're invited, don't go. It is a perfect setup for rape. <clears throat> I went. And at gunpoint, I was raped. And guess what? No one else came to that party. So now I had to hitchhike my little humiliated and angry behind home. The creeps I had to ride with, I had to get in and out of cars till I finally got in the car with a lady and her children in order to get home safely. It, it was ridiculous. I felt like I had been taken out on a tour of, of the, the cruelty of the world all in one night. I mean, I went to... I got a ride with a dope dealer, didn't know he was a dope dealer, and I'm looking at these two people that look like the walking dead, two skeletons. I, I couldn't believe the stuff I was seeing all in one night. Believe me when I say, y'all, that was the last time I ever hitchhiked my big hiney up anywhere I didn't know anything about. I even stopped hitchhiking. So I said all that to say. Listen to instruction. Instruction is not there to cramp your style. Instruction is not telling you you're stupid, even though nine times out of ten, when it comes to the wiles of the world, you are. But you're not stupid. You're just ignorant, which means you just don't know. And they can pick a green one in a minute. So listen to instruction. Keep yourself out of danger's way, out of harm's way. Please stop being so hard-headed. The Bible says that pride comes before a fall and a haughty heart before destruction.